Could I play as quickly as you? I believe so. Why not? Because you're Oscar Peterson, for God's sake. <laughs> I love what I do. I love music. I love jazz. And it would have to be something awfully immense to offset that in any way. My dad, one day at the dinner table, discovered that I had some kind of pitch, and he wanted us to be musical. He decided that, that from the beginning, from the get-go, as they say, and he uh, insisted that we stick with it. My dad thought I was getting a little overseen with myself, and he heard this record, and he played it for me. It was our Tatum's Tiger Rag. So I said, that's nice. Who are the, who are the two guys playing the piano? Said, Not two guys, it's one man. Nah, come on. Somebody's playing the left hand, somebody's playing the right hand. No, 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 no. It's one man. Tonight we'd like you to meet a colored boy whose amazing fingers have been cutting a rhythmic blazing path to success over the airwaves for the past three years now. Three years back, Oscar, then 15, won a nationwide new talent contest. And today, still going to school, he manages to make his presence felt on as many occasions as his homework would allow, filling engagements over the radio networks. Tell me, boy, how many hands you got? Just two, Mr. Davis, just two. But I like to make them work hard. And we're mighty happy he could make it. You will be too when you listen to Oscar Peterson. <laughs> I can teach almost anyone to play fast if that's a big deal. The thing is, what do you play? How harmonically are you driven? I think ahead when I play. Do you? I, I you think You can't, ahead. Oscar. That's I do. You can't be thinking I do, think do, ahead. Do, 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 do when you're no, playing. No, I boo, boo, believe boo, boo, me. Boo. I play behind what I'm thinking. I'm not sitting there playing it and waiting till the last note and then say, oh, I think I'll put this with it. That's too late. The minute I start a phrase, I've clicked on, as they, if you want to talk computerese, the macro that's going to play that phrase, and I'm thinking of what's going to connect to that phrase. So, you know, I'm not sitting here saying this is going to be a G and this is going to be an A. You haven't got time for that. Primarily, a classical player is an interpreter. A jazz player is an instant composer. My early growing years were spent in Montreal, and I stayed there almost till I was in my early 20s. Montreal, at that time, I think was the, as they used to call it, the Paris of America. We used to have a lot of Americans coming up to spend the weekends because there was so much going on in Montreal. They had all kinds of cabaret shows, they had burlesque, you know, they had concerts, you name it, we had it. Number Grant, when he heard our sustaining broadcast at the time, was on, and the ta cabbie had it on. And Norman heard this and said, what is, who is that? What is it? Like, Sasuke Peterson. That's when Norman came into the picture at the Alberta and insisted that I come down to Carnegie Hall. And all, all the people that I admired on records were there on stage. And I sat in the audience the first part of the concert. And I thought to myself, now what am I going to do after all of this? Because I was mesmerized hearing people that, that I idolized. And Norman came down in the audience after the uh, first half and said, okay, come on with me. So I went out and did the best I could. <laughs>
married to her. I went to the States and it sort of <laughs> mushroomed. And that's another thing that's hard to handle. You know, you come out of a city where you're a local pianist that people like and they appreciate you being there and you play well. Thank you. And you have a radio, a 15 minute radio sustainer. And you look up all of a sudden you're uh, on stage at Carnegie Hall and people are standing up doing this and screaming. You know, and at the stage door, it's a different life. It made me realize too late that it's not the best thing in the world to have a fair-sized family and be doing what I was doing. It didn't make any sense. Because you can't be there for the offspring when they need you. The road is tough, as everyone knows, and I wrote a poem once, I wish I could find it, called The Lonesome One. You know, it is not at all what people envision. Traveling the road is it was one of the loneliest things in the world that somebody can do. And you know, when you have a family, that's not easy, especially when they're young. It left a tremendous load on my wife at that time, and it eventually ended in a divorce and separation. You know, who do you tell if you go out and have one hell of a concert? And, I, and especially if you have some of the names on it that I was traveling with. And your section comes off like in mushrooms, right? The concert's over and you're ready to play another one right then. But no, no, it's finished. You, you got to fly the next morning at uh, 7.30. Be out in L.A. or wherever you're going. So you go back to the hotel. Who do you tell? Who do you come home and say, boy, did I find the switch tonight? You're there with the four walls. It's quiet, you know. Yeah, you have a phone, but it's not the same thing as you're not going to phone home every night at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning when there are kids in the house. I still say that if I had my life to live over, there's no way I would even consider getting married before I was at least 40. People do not realize the effect that a good or bad marriage can have on a performer. It's not easy to project happiness if you're not happy inside. That's really difficult, I know. You have to almost be cold. You have to say, well, so it's not working, so okay. That's that department. And you have to try and put it aside. No, you can't put it out of your mind, but you try to put it to one side. Because it can block your, your improvisational uh, ideas. If I allow these things to cloud my vision, then I, I would not be able to play. Uh, my music, I would say emotional. Because I, I play exactly the way I feel. Respect to the instrument, number one. If you play it well, it will play well for you. What a communicator the piano is. I never thought of it that way before, you know, because I can sit down to a piano and I feel that I can impart something that I want to say musically a lot easier, certainly, than I had been able to do in trying to put words into that volume. When I was able to walk on the stage in, I think I believe it was Copenhagen, after my stroke and play with my group again, that was an important moment to me. I believe that 
part of the thing is never overreaching what you can do. How is your relationship with your kids now? They're not kids, they're men and women now, but I don't think I've changed that much. But they've grown to understand what my profession demanded of me. Well, I think your music is what you are. And that's all I want to do. I want to leave a... Um, I want to leave an ideal for young pianists, jazz pianists, to look at. I want them to evaluate that.